Hi, my name is Shad Sluter and we're about ready to start a class called Information Security. This is a one semester class that teaches you everything you need to know as a programmer and computer scientist on issues related to your code and to your operations. So let's take a look at the outline of what we're going to learn this semester. So in the first section, we're going to talk about just basic definitions of security, some things that you should know as a baseline. Then we'll talk about authentication, encryption, and we'll talk about logins and things that would be related to passwords. Then we'll talk about software security. So this refers to malware, such as viruses and worms and key loggers and other things that would affect your computer in a negative way. We'll talk about web security. And so we'll build an app that will teach us all the principles that we should know about building a secure web app. And then we'll talk about operating systems, so things that would design an operating system to protect the memory and to avoid having rootkits or other invasions in your levels of security in the operating system. We'll focus in on database security. We'll return to our web app that we built in the previous unit, and we'll make some further enhancements to make sure that our database is secure. And we'll talk about cloud security. We'll take our web app and move it to an Azure web instance, and then we'll talk about some of the issues that arise as soon as you move to a cloud. And so that's what's ahead. So briefly, let's talk about each of the units. So in defining cybersecurity, we're gonna talk about attack methods. We'll take a look at some cases and we'll also talk about terminology. Now in unit number two, we're going to talk about historical things that were done in the past, even before computers to encrypt data. We'll talk about the difference between symmetric and asymmetric encryption. We'll talk about the algorithm called AES. We'll talk about RSA encryption. We'll talk about public and private keys. We'll use GPG, which is a utility to encrypt your messages. We'll talk about the difference between hashing and encryption. We'll try to do some password cracking. We'll talk about rainbow tables and salting your passwords. So hacker things with your password. And then we'll talk about alternatives in ways that you can authenticate a user other than a password. And so that's unit two on authentication and encryption. In unit three, we'll talk about malware or software security. And so we'll do some do-it-yourself examples to understand how these things are built and why they work against us. So we'll build a program that's a macro virus. We'll talk about a Python virus, which is a very simple version of a virus. And then we'll build a virus cleaner to get rid of it. And then we'll talk about a key logger. We'll build one using the C-sharp language. And you can see how easy it is to plant some malware on an unsuspecting victim. Then we'll do a little bit of malware analysis. How do they figure out what a piece of malware is using a virus scanner. And then we'll do some case studies about some famous viruses that affected the internet on a large scale. Now in unit four, we're going to do a lot of programming. We're gonna build an app called the Jokes app. It's a simple web app that has a database. We'll build it, we'll break it, and then we'll fix it. Some of the things that we'll investigate, such as what's the difference between a post and a get request, and which one is secure, We'll talk about password complexity and how you can dictate to your users how complex their password should be. We'll talk about SQL injection attacks and then we'll fix them in our code. We'll do password hashing and then we'll finally do what's called prepared statements, which is what you can do with SQL injection to make it uh, more secure. And then lastly, we'll talk about cross-site scripting and that has to do with JavaScript and built into your input fields. Into unit five, we're going to talk about operating systems. And so we'll look at some rootkits and how they are able to worm their way into an operating system and take over as an administrator and hide themselves from any of the tools that are normally used to identify what programs are running. We'll talk about buffer overflows and how they can be used to plant malicious code in an operating system. Operating systems are designed to have different levels of memory protection, and so we'll investigate those. And then there are different layers of privileged access that an operating system is supposed to enforce. So operating systems is a huge topic. It should be in its own course, like any of these units. But we'll talk about some of the security issues that come up in operating systems. In topic six, we'll talk about databases. We'll go back to our jokes app that we built in unit four, and we'll make some further enhancements. We'll talk about the uh, issues of what ACID principles are, especially with atomic transactions. So if you have multiple steps in a single transaction, an atomic transaction will either succeed or fail as a unit and will roll back if there is one part out of many that actually fails. And so that's an atomic transaction and we'll see an example of how to do that. 
Also in our app, we'll add two-factor authentication. So that way you can use a device like your cell phone to make sure that the password that was stored in the database is the same one that is actually the real person out there. In topic seven, we'll go to cloud security. And so we will take the jokes app that we've been building throughout the semester and we will deploy it to Azure. So from a local machine to a server machine on the internet. So then we'll take a new approach to databases and our passwords altogether. We will just eliminate the storage of our password and we will use OAuth integration. So that's like Google login. So you don't have to worry about saving somebody's account and their password because that's Google's problem now. And then we'll finally get to cloud security issues. So you have the same issues related to your local server as you do as one that's online, but we will have to add a few extra items to the list. And so cloud security will finish off in topic seven. And so our information security class has these seven parts, defining security, authentication and encryption, software security, web security, operating systems, databases, and cloud security. So this will be part one. It'll get you halfway there for what you need to know about being a professional software developer or IT professional in the real world. So let's get started with information security.